Hello, my name is Ryan Bright from Wellington High School and this is my presentation Rebound and Capsule. This presentation is a continuation of my work for the International Young Physicist Tournament which I did earlier this year. My project focus is as follows. A spherical ball dropped onto a hard surface will never rebound to the release height, even if it has initial spin. A capsule shaped object, i.e. Tic Tac Mints, on the other hand, may exceed the initial height. Investigate this phenomenon. For this investigation, I am defining a capsule shape to be the shape of a cylinder with two hemispheres attached to the ends, and I will be assuming that a Tic Tac is a capsule shape. The mass of the Tic Tac, length of the cylinder, and radius of the hemispheres is shown here. The rotational inertia of the Tic Tac around the axis out of the screen, through the centre of mass, is the sum of the cylinder's rotational inertia plus two hemispheres uh, shifted using the parallel axis theorem. Put in terms of the Tic Tac's mass, it's this, which for my Tic Tacs evaluates to this. There are three translational dimensions and three rotational dimensions the Tic Tac exists in. Because of the geometry of the Tic Tac, all the relevant accelerations and energy changes happen in a plane consisting of the vertical and horizontal position and then rotation around the out-of-plane dimension. In this diagram's case, rotation around the axis out of the screen. For my system, x is horizontal position and y is vertical position. My setup contains a lamp shining on a background and a high-speed camera. I use two cameras, one that could do 1000 frames a second at 1080 resolution, and one that could do 40,000 frames a second. As I have already said, there are three degrees of freedom that, the, um, that matter, and so to get good data of the Tic Tac's motion, I made sure to only analyse footage where the Tic Tac's path was in plane with the camera's field of view. To release the Tic Tac, I had a wooden claw that would release the Tic Tac at a given angle and a controlled height. Then, once I got the video, I put it into Tracker and tracked the Tic Tac. This gave me how the Tic Tac moved through these three degrees of freedom through time. Using this data, I got, the en I got the energy of the Tic Tac using these equations. The translational kinetic energy is the combination of the x and y velocity of, uh, velocity of the center of mass. And the total energy for my system is the sum of translational and rotational kinetic energies of the Tic Tac plus the Tic Tac's gravitational potential energy. This is a video captured at 1000 frames a second of the Tic Tac's motion when the phenomenon is observed. Looking at the energy graph of this Tic Tac, we can see that it starts with a large amount of translational kinetic energy, which, at the moment of the first collision, suddenly drops down. The remaining kinetic energy then transfers into gravitational potential and back into translational kinetic energy as it accelerates downwards. Then on the next collision, it gains a bunch of translational kinetic energy, which again converts into gravitational potential energy, and therefore height. Now including the rotational kinetic energy of the Tic Tac through time, we can see that the sudden drop in translational kinetic energy went into a gain in rotational kinetic energy, which is seen as the fast spinning of the Tic Tac in the video. What this graph shows is that at each collision with the ground there is an interchange of energies, which means that on the second bounce the Tic Tac has more translational kinetic energy that becomes gravitational potential and therefore a greater final height. What we saw in the energy graph was that at each collision there was a drop in the en total energy of the Tic Tac where the time of collision of each collision is shown by the white lines. This drop in energy can be quantified by a parameter called the coefficient of restitution, which I'll cover later in the presentation. When the capsule impacts the ground, there is a friction force that opposes the relative motion of the Tic Tac's surface to the surface that's colliding with, and a normal force which often acts off-center of the center of mass. Because these forces are acting off-center of the center of mass, they have perpendicular components that act as torques around the center of mass. Because the normal force is a purely vertical force, it also causes a purely vertical acceleration on the Tic Tac. As friction is a purely horizontal force, it causes a purely horizontal acceleration on the Tic Tac. The forces cause both angular and translational accelerations. Applying Newton's second law for the by applying Newton's second law, we can see that in order for the Tic Tac to have a net upwards acceleration, there has to be a net upwards force, and the change in the Tic Tac's momentum only happens while the Tic Tac is colliding with the ground. The faster the surface of the Tic Tac uh, at the collision point hits the ground, the larger the force acting up on the Tic Tac. By combining Newton's second law with the coefficient of restitution, which is given as this, and I'll cover that later in the presentation, Newton's second law can be 
rewritten in terms of the initial velocity uh, of the part of the tic-tac hitting the ground. And the velocity of the tic-tac that's hitting the ground is shown is given by this equation here. Looking at this model, there are two parameters that we need to find, the duration of the collision and the coefficient of restitution. To get footage of the duration of the collision, I used the same setup as before, but with a camera that did 40,000 frames a second. Here is an example clip of one such collision. In this clip, the Tic Tac collided with the ground for about 5 frames, which is roughly 0.124 milliseconds. Doing this measurement for a bunch of videos, I then got some data showing how the duration of the collision depends on the angle at which the collision happens at. What this data shows is that there is some sort of sinusoidal relationship between the duration and angle of the collision. This makes sense because at small angles, the Tic Tac is close to horizontal, and so the normal force will have a large tangen tangential component which will cause a larger angular acceleration, and so, and so the Tic Tac would rotate away from the ground much faster. The coefficient of restitution for my system is defined as the ratio of final to initial velocity of the collision point on the Tic Tac. The velocity of the Tic Tac's collision point is described by the y component of the center of masses velocity, plus the y component of the tangential velocity due to the rotational velocity of the Tic Tac. And so the velocities can be described as this. I then... Uh, Doing this calculation for the velocities, I used the gradient of the position data to get very accurate estimates for the initial and final velocities, and calculated the coefficient of restitution for a couple of materials. I tried some others, but they were um, they they were too rigid, and so the collision was too fast for the camera to actually see, which was quite surprising. And so this is the data I have gathered. All right. So in order to try verify how applicable this equation that I have derived is, I have written some code which employs the fourth order Ragnarkata numerical integration method. To get how position changes through time, I needed to first make my original equation an expression of acceleration. All that numerical integrators do is look at the current position and then steps forward in space and time to the next point. Ragnarkata is quite powerful because it, is, it has a very small global error, and it is numerically stable for the time steps I used. I could describe how the Ragnarkata family of integrators work, but I'm also almost out of time, sorry. I also needed an expression for the angular acceleration, which is just done by doing some trigonometry on the normal force equation. One important thing to note is that the model assumes no friction. Lastly, when the tic tac when the tic tac is not colliding with the ground, it's just a it's just accelerating downward due to gravity and so acts as a projectile, and the solution will be parabolic. Here is a graph showing the vertical position of a Tic Tac's center of mass through time when it shows the phenomenon. On the first bounce, the model works great, and there is very little deviation from the parabolic path the Tic Tac makes. On the second bounce, though, there is a much larger discrepancy. This is likely due, this is likely due to the fact that I'm not accounting for friction, and when the Tic Tac hits the ground for the first time, a large part of the torque that acts on the Tic Tac is due to friction, and so without that friction, there will be the simulation will underestimate the gained angular velocity of the Tic Tac, and on the first bounce, and therefore on the second bounce, it'll have a it will collide at a different angle with a different angular velocity, and so it will uh, bounce completely differently. Aside from the discrepancy that you can see, I would say the model quits, fits quite well, and so I'm quite happy about the initial part of this model. In conclusion, I have conducted an investigation into the dynamics of a bouncing capsule. By investigating the energy and forces acting on a capsule, I have produced a mathematical model based on Newton's second law, which simulates the motion of the capsule, with some caveats. I have also made some experimental observations by using a super high-speed camera regarding the duration of collision, and I also made measurements of the coefficient of restitution for a few surfaces. I also gathered a large sum of data to gain an understanding of the, how the energy of the system changes over time, and I've calculated the rotational inertia of the um, capsule by making some assumptions about its geometry, and I've uh, analysed in what I would believe to be great depth the energy of the system through time, and how looking at the energy of the system can help lead to a description of the phenomenon, and then 
again, the description of forces acting on the capsule and developing that model. Here is the graph showing the interesting experimental results. Here's my bibliography. Special thanks to these people. Thank you.